great, the painting's done, but I hate it. Like seriously, I hate it. What does tuna and this painting have to do with each other? He was eating a plant. Well, that could have turned into an episode of 48 hours, so that's sort of exciting. Tuna, did you take a bite out of this plant? Here's the thing, the plants I had in there were the only low light plants that would work in that office. And now Tuna's eating them. This set me on a path of change. Change is good, right? It's good, it's healthy. They like change. I swapped my plants out for some bird safe Hoyas, but that also meant they were gonna need a plant light to survive in there. Lisa, why don't you just get rid of the plants in the office? Don't be ridiculous. I found a good plant light, but my desk started looking really cluttered with multiple smaller plant pots now, and just all the other stuff turned into an entire overhaul of my desk. My office Office is themed everything's all ocean and then there's this painting of a deer I don't I don't know why I just I hung it there when I moved in and it stayed and it does not fit the room if I'm going to make myself a painting I want something super custom that fits this specific office this is what I was looking for I wanted to combine my red eye tree frog glitch I wanted to combine tuna and my reef tanks the whole ocean thing and if possible I'd love to incorporate that Alice in Wonderland sort of weird vibe I started with a round Fredericks canvas and Fredericks did provide me with the canvas I used here just for transparency I am sponsored by Fredericks they were already the only canvas I used so no difference there for me I love the shape of the convexo canvases but they have a lot of tooth to it which is good for heavy like more impressionistic painting heavy brush strokes but for fine blending and detail I just added three coats of gel and then sanded that down to a finer grit. Now that the canvas is nice and smooth, I can go ahead and start painting the background. Now for this part, I only painted the background. Notice I did not draw in my subject. I'm working in acrylics here and acrylics dry really fast. If I drew everything out and tried to paint around it, things are gonna be drying, things are gonna be rough. They are not gonna look super smooth. So with acrylics, I like to work with whatever is farthest back and move my way forward here. That is going to be the sky and then the water underneath and then the ocean surface. Now, as I'm painting this background and the clouds, the way that I am keeping this paint wet the whole time while I work so it looks like an oil painting is that I'm using a fine mist sprayer. This gives you, well, a fine mist, that's not redundant, and it keeps the paint wet for as long as you need. I can keep this wet for hours if I need to, which is going to give me the ability to get super, super smooth blending. my background painting I pulled that into Photoshop and then I was able to draw out the line art for tuna and glitch now tuna loves to sit on glitches vivarium I thought it'd be really cute to make the story that those two are out on a day trip together tuna is going to be flying in to let glitch know that they have almost reached land when you never leave the house you come up with some weird stories about your animals don't judge once I had that line drawing done I used a projector and projected that onto the canvas so I had nice clean lines didn't have to worry about erasing everything was just well clean. No one likes eraser marks all over the place. I used a white charcoal pencil to draw the image onto the canvas. If you use a regular graphite pencil, one, you're not gonna see it. It is really hard to see. But two, which is oddly contradictory, you'll see it through the paint. You won't see it when you need it, but then when you have it painted over, that graphite's like trying to peek through like a creepy stalker. That white charcoal pencil, definitely the way to go. It erases all the way and you can actually see it while you're working. However, if you are using an acrylic paint that has a high gloss to it, the white charcoal pencil doesn't stick super well. So good luck to you guys. But with the Liquitex Basics, my favorite acrylics, not because they're cheap, that's just an added bonus. They're fairly matte. And so that white charcoal pencil sticks really nicely.
hey, isn't your canary peach? Why did you paint him red? My canary is a red factor. Depending on the diet, meaning am I giving him supplements with red in it, he can turn super red. That is why I took some artistic liberties there. It's my painting, I can make questionable choices. He's like that color changing horse on Wizard of Oz, except better, because it's tuna. Now came for my real challenge. What should I paint under the water? Originally, I was thinking maybe stingrays. I already have a painting in here with orcas, actually two paintings with orcas. I've got a sea turtle. Like what weird thing could I paint? Let me introduce you to the cuttlefish. These guys are in the same family as octopuses and squid, but weirder. How great is that for an Alice in Wonderland vibe? And of course the striped demons. I mean, damsels. Anyone with a reef tank knows demons is probably a more accurate way to describe them. I love these fish, but they cannot go in my reef tank because they will unalive all my other fish. They're little, little, little adorable striped demons. They seem safe enough for a painting, but if I get bit while I'm sleeping at night, I know it was you. Great, the painting's done, but I hate it. Like seriously, I hate it. I mean, if I were just making a random painting that I'm gonna make prints or sell to somebody else, it's fine. My problem was, I don't like daytime paintings. Why did I paint a day painting? That doesn't even make sense. I, okay, there's a reason why I thought so. It's dark in here. And so I thought a lighter painting would look good, but the more I looked at it, the more I hated it. But I could also call it done right now, and it's, well, it's done. Stop being lazy and just fix it. Fine. So here are my options. I could paint over it glazing the color with acrylics but it's going to dry fast. Even with the spray bottle, it is gonna be very difficult to paint around the subjects and really have it smooth. I'm always going to notice every single area that didn't quite blend as smooth as I wanted. If I sold the painting, if someone else was looking, they wouldn't notice. But because I did it, I'm going to notice and I know it's going to drive me nuts. Or I can accept that it would just look so much better with oils, which I kind of wanted to do in the first place, but I was trying to get this painting done sooner, in which case acrylics are faster, which is funny because it's been six months and I haven't even hung the painting yet. Five months. I can't count, stop judging. So that is what I decided to do. Back to the drawing board, or easel. So the plan with glazing, what I'm doing is tinting the color. I'm not completely going to lose all of the detail. You can still see the cuttlefish, the canary, the clouds, everything, you can see everything. But I'm switching or tinting the color. I'm using very translucent layers. I'm thinning everything down with liquid, which is a fast drying medium that I use with my oil paints. So anything I paint now will be dry to the touch within about 12 hours or so, so I can go on to my next layer. It's going to be very, very translucent. So think tinting your car windows. You can still see through it. It just adjusts that color, which makes it very easy to change color with. Now you can do that with acrylics. It's just that you're fighting the dry time and on something this big, trying to tint that color and get the smooth blending, it was just gonna be a bit of a pain. So once everything was glazed in, I hated it. Again, I hated it. Like why? I don't normally have this many issues with a painting. And normally color, I say, isn't that big of a deal. But because this was for me and I wanted it to go in my office and I'm gonna be looking at it all the time, yeah, no, I hated it. Usually when I paint a marine scene, the above water portion, whatever blue I use in the sky, I will typically use in the water. And it's just an easy way to make sure that everything has a nice balance to it. But sometimes I like to break my own rules and then instantly regret them. What I needed was to bring those two colors between the sky and underwater closer together. So now that I made this project take an absolute eternity, I decided to take some indigo and just glaze. So I'm thinning this out with a lot of liquid, making it very translucent. I can still see the details of the stars and the clouds behind it, but it tints that color. And I tinted the color so that it was an indigo and then the water, so it was an indigo, it still has that glow of teal, just a bit, but it brought those two colors together. So they were now so much more appealing. So now that everything is tinted, I love it. It went from I absolutely hate it to I absolutely love it. What is the lesson here? Well, if you want the actual painting lesson, you can head over to Patreon where you get access to all 400, there's more than 400 now, of my art lessons for as little as $6 a month. That is over 600 hours of lessons. I actually counted once. It, it was a lot. But besides that, 
actual painting lesson. The big lesson here is when something goes wrong in your painting and you're not happy with it, do not throw it out. Keep working on it, layer until it looks good. And especially with oils and acrylics, you don't hit a point like with colored pencils where you can't get more layers to stick. You can keep layering. So when you have a layer that you're just like, oh my gosh, I ruined it. Oh my gosh, I hate this. You're not gonna learn a whole lot by tossing it and starting over. Cause usually what happens is artists will just keep making the same mistake over and over again. Leave the mistake on the canvas and figure out how to fix it. You will learn so much from that. Even if you continuously hate it, maybe you never redeem the painting and you never love it. At least you've definitely learned what not to do in the future. <laughs>